This problem is a step harder, um, and I know that right off the bat because of the word initially. Initially tells me that we are not at equilibrium. Again, when I have KC expressions, I have to plug in equilibrium values. So if I don't have equilibrium values, which I don't if they say initially, if I don't have equilibrium values, I can't plug any of the numbers in to KC. Um, and so here's what you're probably, when I say what I'm going to say next, you're probably going to want to like groan. So pause the video, groan, get your tears out of the way. It's not going to be as bad as you think, I promise. Um, but when I say the word initially, that means I have some amount. Now, it's not quite balanced between the reactants and the products. And by balanced, I don't mean equal amounts. Um, I mean that the rate of the reaction is equal in both directions. But I don't quite have yet that perfect ratio that I want. Um, so I have some initial amounts, and I know that at some point, after it does a bunch of changing, we'll have equilibrium amounts. Initially, then change, then equilibrium. Or ice. Ice starts. Um, so here's where if you need to pause and groan, go for it, but I promise they're not bad. Different from how you've done ice charts in the past, when we do ice charts with equilibrium, go ahead and use molarity rather than moles. Um, they still work in moles, but then by the time you're done with the ice chart and going to find KC, um, a lot of students forget to get all the way to molarity and then they get it wrong. So use molarity in your whole ice chart to simplify your life. Um, initially, we have two moles of N2, two moles divided by the 5 liters for N2. That gets me 0.4, and that's an initial value, so that'll go in my eye row. Um, and 4 moles of N2O4, so for N2O4, 4 moles in the 5 liter container. Then it says add equilibrium, so now in my equilibrium row, three moles of NO2. Oh, I miswrote this. That should have said NO2 the whole time. Um, so now I have NO2 at equilibrium. It's a new value. Three divided by five is 0.6. And that's all I'm given. So that already feels a little different from ice charts you've done in the past because you're used to the products always being zero initially. Here we were given other numbers, so we're gonna use them. If ever you weren't given a value, initially, either for the reactants or the products, you can make it zero. Now, the other thing, um, you're used to the reactants always being minus and the products always being plus. You can still do that, um, but it's not always necessarily true. It'll work out, you'll get the right answer. But if you look at what's happening here, we have 0.4 molarity of NO2. We're ending with 0.6. The fact that it goes up, that the number gets bigger, tells me that this side is increasing and the other side is decreasing. So for me, if ever I can see that the number is getting bigger or whatever side has a zero, in this case neither of them do, but if one of them had a zero to start, that's the side that's positive. You can only go up from zero and going from a small number to a big number is going up. It doesn't actually matter mathematically as long as one side is plus and the other side is minus. Then we put x's here, and the number of x's are equal to the coefficient. So 2x on this side, 1x on that side. Wherever you have a complete column, that serves as an equation. 0.4 plus 2x equals 0.6. And we solve this for x. Now, if you ever do it backwards from how I'm doing a problem, if you put minus here and plus there, you should get the same x value with the opposite sign. So if I had a minus here, I'd end up with negative 0.1 as my x, and that's okay. X's can be negative. But make sure that you never, ever, ever get an equilibrium value. That's negative. You can't end with a negative amount of stuff. It's not a thing. You did something wrong. So x's can be negative. Equilibrium values cannot. Um, in this case, though, I don't even have a negative x value, and that's because I set this up in a logical way. 
that x can go and be plugged in. 0.8 minus 0.1 gets me 0.7. And now this E row represents equilibrium. We told you first semester it represented end. There isn't necessarily an end to these reactions, but there is a point where they reach equilibrium. These equilibrium values can be plugged into my KC expression. Again, I'm going to write the expression with nothing plugged in first, just products over reactants, coefficients becoming exponents. That gets me a point. Then I want to plug equilibrium values in, making sure none of my equilibrium values are negative. So N2O4 over NO2, and my equilibrium expression says to square that NO2 value. 0.7 divided by 0.6 squared, 1.94. Again, there are no, no units on my equilibrium expressions. Um, that's it. So I might ask you for the KC value. I might ask you for all equilibrium values, in which case both of those would be my answer.